Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to this edition of uh, This Week. Uh, good morning, Scott. Morning, Joe. And uh, I want to welcome, uh, we have a, a new person uh, working with us this morning. That's Laura from the great state of Michigan. Good morning, Laura. Thank you, Joe. And uh, welcome. We're really excited about you being here. Um, we had a little bit of a hiatus uh, uh, last week, uh, but we normally start by saying good morning, Revolution, quoting the great poet Langston Hughes. Um, and also, I want to encourage everybody, if you're watching, to click on Start a Watch Party so that uh, you can share this uh, program with your friends. Everybody, share the socialist wealth, you know? If you're watching, we imagine you're a left-wing person or some right-wingers and middle of the roaders might be, might be there as well. But please, wherever you are and whatever your persuasion, shit, click, on, click on the uh, watch party button uh, at the bottom of your screen. Well, it's been a hell of uh, uh, two weeks. Uh, the uh, UAW strike uh, has come to a uh, end and uh, also the teacher strike in Chicago. Laura, do you get a sense that the uh, workers in Michigan are happy with the results? Yeah, I mean, most people voted for the tentative contract and GM, obviously. And um, there are some people who are on, a little bit unhappy, but they were on strike for 40 days. Wow. And, you yeah. know, my feeling is whatever they decide is the right thing for them and their families. And they know they know best. So yes. as someone who will only showed up a few times to say, hello, I'm here to help. I'm not there 24 seven like they were. I, I really congratulate them on the gains they did make. There is gonna be some problem for, uh, the two tier workers didn't get exactly what they wanted, but there is a lot of progress to making a wage. Um, so anyway, a better that's, wage. That's great news. And I understand that there was a lot of solidarity from the older workers to, toward the younger workers because the two tier, uh, system was one of the major issues uh, that they were striking about in the first place. And so that's kind of unity between generations, really important. And in Chicago, Scott, where you used to be a teacher, they also set up the uh, strike. What do you think? Uh, you know, what, I, what I've seen of the, um, uh, the tentative agreement there, uh, it looks really strong. Um, mm. They, uh, and, and, and especially focused on gains for the, the schools and the students. Um, so for example, there are gonna be nurses and um, uh, counselors in every building every day, uh, which is a huge step forward. Uh, when I taught there, I think my building had a nurse one morning a week. Um, uh, there are going to be a, a lot of increased uh, resources for special education to lighten the, the burden on special education teachers, but also ensure that, um, that uh, class sizes are, are respected. Um, teachers uh, will be paying um, uh, less for their health care. Um, they'll be able to uh, bank a lot more sick days, which was something that um, was, was given up um, a couple contracts ago for, mm. for newer hires. Um, so it's a, it was a it's a big win and it's the fruit I think of a very very long process of building an immensely strong partnership between the teachers union and um, the the communities of the city and especially black and brown communities. Well, there's a labor community alliance going on. Well, you know we're in the middle of a strike wave, you know, um, and um, like last year there were four hundred and eighty five thousand. Well, between five, I've seen two figures. One was five hundred thousand. The other was four eighty-five. So we'll that fifteen, we won't get upset about that. <laughs> this is the biggest increase since the nineteen seventies, I think, and 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 that's huge. And uh, it's kind of a class struggle moment as well. You know, we talked about a socialist moment in, quote, in quotes, uh, um, but it's also a class struggle moment. Workers are growing more militant, and they feel that they can win. And that's a really important thing. And speaking about winning, how about those elections on Tuesday? You know, um, Laura, uh, a big victory in Kentucky and in Virginia. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, and uh, people ought to read uh, Emil Shepard's article that just came out of the PW about the Virginia elections. They're very significant. And I'd like to just touch on that for a minute. But the um, it'll it's will be on your Facebook page uh, in um, about half an hour. But what's significant about Virginia is, um, you know, they reelected a socialist. They reelected a transgender woman, and they mm -hmm. elected for the first time a Muslim woman. They're mm -hmm. all Democrats. And then for me, another big significance is that this is going to open up a path for the Equal Rights Amendment. So, you know, the Equal Rights Amendment, for some who know the history, has been um, you need 38 states to ratify. They only had 37. And it was very likely that Virginia would be the 38th state. Wow. So early this spring, they tried to ratify it. They, it passed the House, went, or there, and then it didn't, the next, uh, the Senate did not, they quashed it. So the supporters of the ERA said, okay, we're going to get Democrats elected. <laughs> and they were a big force in getting, in making Virginia go all Democrat. So the next step after this, of course, is much, now the good thing is it puts the ERA in the public conversation again. Mm. But there are two major roadblocks, which we'll see. And you know, one is that um, several states have reversed their decision to ratify. And the big question is, will they be allowed to do that? The second question is that the ERA deadline has passed. So now there are bills in Congress and even in the Senate, believe it or not, to remove that deadline. So we'll see who goes from there. But I think Virginia is gonna, um, it's gonna, it's just making news in many ways. Right, right. Well, that's really important. And if you know, the women's vote and the women's movement is is peaking. I mean, it's, you know, it's a huge force in the struggle for democracy in this country. And it seems to me like um, if the GOP wants any chance of uh, holding on to anything, that it would be kind of a shooting themselves in the foot to take a position against, uh, against the uh, ERA. Um, Speaking of the uh, GOP, Scott, uh, impeachment um, is in the news. The hearings are going to start next week. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I I think the I mean, obviously getting rid. I, I don't like the term. I don't like uh, labeling it impeachment um, uh, because I think that the goal is to remove Trump from office, right? Um, and impeachment in the house is it's almost certainly going to happen um i think anyway uh well, it will start happening next week yeah the vote, you mean. okay yeah, go ahead. But yeah the actual vote to 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 impeach you know to call for a trial in the senate um and there's i think there's a sense among a lot of people that oh well the senate's going to acquit him of course so you know whatever uh but that's the goal is to remove trump um when impeachment might send a statement, a statement is not enough. We actually need to be pushing to get him out of there. So we, we can't take the Senate's acquittal as a, a foregone conclusion. And um, we also, I don't know, this needs to be a, a workers and people's impeachment. Um, it's not something that we can leave to, um, you know, the leaders of the Democratic Party or whatever. Um, this is a process that has been demanded kind of on a mass basis and, and, and we need to bring that out as well. Last night there were actually protesters at the uh, Trump Hotel in DC with you know banners saying remove Trump. Uh, so this is a you know, people are- I out. love that concept, a worker and people's impeachment. You know, we ought to write an editorial about that, you know? Well, it draws, it draws on some of that, that uh, I think Mar an expression that Marx and Lenin used uh, talking about um, uh, a way of, Lenin used it talking about the uh, a way of dealing with uh, uh, the czarist regime in, in 1905. Uh, he calls it like the the plebeian or rather proletarian solution to um, to the regime. But you know, it needs to be under the control of the people, led by the people, and not by a vacillating sort of dithering uh, capitalist class. Anyway, <laughs> and that's the case in. Uh all counts, right? I mean, it doesn't, it's not a, a momentary uh, strategy, you know? If the process law isn't driven by the people, in a certain sense, it is not driven by nobody, you know? Um, or we know it will be driven by 
uh, a big business. Speaking of which, a big business, um, what's his name? The Bloomberg, the former <laughs> mayor of New York, is thinking about entering the race. Yeah. Oh, please. Um, um, <laughs> Well, don't we got enough billionaires? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And I mean, he, I think he thinks of himself as like that. There's this. Well, there's this. I think there's this this fantasy uh, among a lot of like the ruling class elements in the Democratic Party that <clears throat> there's this whole movement out there of um, of these very very uh, motivated centrists who love people like Bloomberg who are just aching for, you know, um, the continuation of, of kind of neoliberal economics. Well, wait a minute, isn't the centrist position taken up by your homeboy? Uh, <laughs> Biden? I mean, I mean. Well, I, I, yeah, I'd like to see, I'd like to see Biden and Bloomberg fight for, for whatever six or seven people actually believe. <laughs> well, I, I think they're predicting that Biden is going to peter out as the election, uh, as the primaries uh, develop. But it's interesting. Uh, Bloomberg is looking for a, 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 a space to enter. Speaking of entering, Laura, Jesse, uh, not Jesse, uh, what's his name from Alabama? Huh? Uh, Jeff Session. Jeff Session. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, Jesse, Jeff, Jeff Session. Yeah, yeah he's, he's talking about running running again. again. What a, yeah. he's, did you see that commercial that he did for a Trump they put on the news yesterday? I, I haven't. I just saw the news that he was going to run again. And I think that uh, takes a lot of chutzpah on his part. And, yeah. and I hope that he's defeated really badly because uh, that's just, it, to me, it's just a slap in the face for him to run again. Slap in the face. Supporting that pedophile for the... Uh, yeah. Senate in, in, in Alabama, him and Steve, he, Steve, uh, Steve Bannon um, supporting that pet pedophile for the, um, and, um, you know, he made a video, right, this commercial where he, you know, basically licks Trump's boots, you know, it's directed at Trump. I didn't go on the TV on CNN and attack you, <laughs> the president's program. I'm a good guy. I'm loyal. I'm a loyal mm -hmm. dog. A little bit of an insult to dogs, more than a little bit of an insult. I mean, you know, you know, my dad, you know, <laughs> he used to say about dogs, you know, he, he, he got into an argument with a guy once and he walked up to his porch and he said, you know, bud, he said, I love dogs, you know. He said, but there's one thing I don't like about dogs. Bud said, Bud said, what? And dad said, you can kick them, you can beat them, you can starve them, and they'll always come back wagging their tail, no matter what you do to them. And that so much reminds me of, of, uh, of a Jeff uh, Sessions. So anyway, um, so much for uh, Mr. Sessions. Uh, what do we have on the website this week? You know, uh, Laura, you started working on it. Scott, uh, we, uh, you, you spoke about the article on the Virginia elections. What else did we uh, get up? Um, we posted um, the, the next Specter podcast, which is about the CP uh, one, the hundred, it, it focuses on this, the hundredth anniversary, but also about what the party of the future is going to look like. As you know, the Specter is a youth led podcast. So check that out. We also posted what we may be in the last installment of the environment discussion, and it's actually a graphic novel. So yeah. it's pretty it's pretty cool, uh, fresh looking, and I hope you'll check it out. First time we got a graphic graphic yeah. novel up, uh, uh, yeah. Scott. Yeah. And Scott, the party of a new type. Um, did you listen to the podcast? Uh, I listened to most of it. It's um, it's uh, you and Rosanna with uh, Michael. Uh, most of it. Most of it. <laughs> most of it. Got yeah. sleep watching it. What the hell happened? <laughs> I uh, had a had a baby emergency. I had oh, to take yeah, care yeah. of. Yeah. Uh, but it's. Uh, I think it really speaks to um, the both to the the, the power of uh, Lenin's uh, conception of of. The party of a new type, the need for uh, an organization of working class power, um, uh, but also to the, you know, the need to to innovate on that basis and, and to keep thinking about, you know, what is it today that the working class needs us to do, needs us for? We are, we are supposed to be 
their tool, their weapon in, in the struggle for socialism. So, And the important thing is that that concept of the party is not a static concept frozen in time. You know, it was one thing in 1905 and given the circumstances in, in, in Russia at that moment. Uh, but as we saw in the 1920s, the concept changed a little bit. And that quasi-military um, group of disciplined professional revolutionaries, you know, organized on the basis of democratic centralism, ready to storm the wind the Winter Palace, it developed and matured, you know, and uh, into the concept of a mass party uh, and a mass working class party. Um, and and uh, and also, I, I think that the um, the aim of the party um, also underwent a little bit of a moderation, not a fundamental change, because the fundamental object is to help the working class movement and the people's movement uh, usher in socialism. Um, but uh, the way to go about doing it um, uh, in terms of the combination of class and democratic struggle uh, and, and the importance of the party um, assuming the uh, leading political and intellectual and moral and cultural role in society um, the working class the working class yeah. and and the party too and the party. As, 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 yes. working class that was a that was a because up until that time intellectuals from the middle classes have led our movement mm -hmm. intellectuals led it from the middle and upper classes and now that's no longer necessary you know uh, we lead our own thing and that's really essential to the whole concept and, and uh, in, in at least some part, because a lot of what used to be considered, you know, petty bourgeois uh, strata, uh, intellectuals, whatever, that work has been proletarized. Teachers, um, professors are undergoing, they're being, as Marx Horsoff pushed down into the working class. And speaking of working class leaders, Laura, um, not a member of the party, but a great advanced Democrat, we lost John Conyers. Yeah. And his funeral was on, uh, what was it, on Monday or Tuesday? Yeah. We had a chance to watch it. It was a tremendous tribute to uh, Congressman Conyers. Yeah, I watched the funeral. He's a big loss for Michigan. He was 90, he was up there in age. Um, but as somebody who attended a lot of events where he would just show up, I saw him a lot, um, got to talk to him. He is. Um, what's really amazing about that funeral was that they were reminding us of the range of issues he was involved with. I mean, I had forgotten about he actually, he was supporting the struggle to free Angela Davis, for example. Right. Someone invoked her name at the funeral. Um, of course, we all know about Medicare for All, HR 676, every year. He didn't, and, they, and Maxine Waters' speech was really good. If you get a chance, go on YouTube. She was the last or second last speaker. She really emphasized that he fought for struggles that were so unpopular. So you go from Angela Davis to the MLK holiday, it took 15 years to get that through, to um, Medicare for all. He was talking about way before Bernie Sanders was talking about it. So he, that kind of contribution was really great. The neat thing about him too was one thing Maxine or someone else said was that he would just walk into an event, sit down and listen to the speaker. And I know that personally, because I'm in a, a women's peace group, we'd hold events. It's like, oh, my God, John Conyers showed up. Do you want to speak? And, you know, no, he just wanted to sit and listen to the speaker. Mm. And so he was just just a big loss uh, for the peace and justice community. And we need a lot more people like him. Um, we have to acknowledge also the, you know, He's human, and it's a really a sad tragedy that he was uh, left under the terms that he did. Yeah. Um, but his legacy is far greater, in my opinion, and I'm speaking as a feminist too, so it's a hard thing for me to say, but I think the legacy he leaves is, is very important, and um, we need a lot more John Conyers in this world. He's such a brave person.
no doubt about it. You know, a guy that came out of the assembly lines uh, in the uh, General Motors or Ford, I don't know which one he worked in, you know, to uh, walk in lead in the halls of Congress is a, is a huge, is a huge uh, thing. Uh, so it's a loss for Michigan and it's a loss for the country. It's a loss for humanity, uh, actually. Well, guys, I think it, that just about does it. Um, thank you, Laura, for uh, joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week. And Scott, see you next week. By the way, uh, a week from Saturday, the, uh, the uh, National Committee of the Communist Party is uh, having its second meeting since the convention. And um, we're going to stream part of it. So we hope that uh, you will join us on Saturday at 1.30. Not this Saturday, but a week from Saturday. I think it's the 16th. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's sure to be a lively uh, discussion. We're going to be putting forward some, I hope, exciting and maybe even controversial uh, uh, issues on the table. Uh, but the most important thing is that we are in a hugely important struggle moment in this country, as exemplified by what happened last Tuesday, as is being exemplified in the impeachment uh, hearings. And Scott, you're right, we need a working class and people's impeachment. We gotta keep the pressure on. That, that issue is so important because it's the door through which uh, this fight for, uh, to defeat Trump that is going to step through. There's no getting around it. Um, and hopefully when people see the connivings and the corruptions and the double dealing, that is going on, uh, 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 they will wake up and uh, uh, some of them will be moved and that's really important. Anyway, uh, until next week, thanks and uh, we'll talk to you. See you later. Bye. Take care.